Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Alex Nichols. Hey, Alex. Robert, thanks for having me. Alex is here to talk about Team Foundation Server 2018, the latest release of our wonderful on-prems DevOps uh, server. Um, so it has just released new stuff. You're going to show us a bunch of new features that have appeared in between the previous uh, release, 2017, and now 2018, right? That's right. Yeah, we've been working on a lot of these features in the VSTS mm -hmm. product that's, that's hosted. And now we're, we're taking those, bundling them up, and, and delivering them on-prem. So let's just review that for, for one second. So mm. TFS is, is the on-prem's version, um, and it's releasing, well, the previous was 2017, now it's mm. 2018, so if you do the math, it's about <laughs> once a right. year, right? Right. right. Um, VSTS is the hosted version of it, and mm -hmm. that's releasing on every three weeks, every sprint, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, so the features that we're going to see today that are now in TFS 2018 have been in VSTS for anywhere from three weeks to a year. Right, right. Depending. right. Yeah, th this is one of the beauties of it. We This is all actually coming from a single master branch. Mm -hmm. And we branched uh, a few sprints ago. So these would have been features that uh, went into the service uh, the 122 time frame, the Sprint 122. Okay, because uh, a few weeks ago, uh, you and Dimitri did an episode on VSTS Sprint 124. That's right. So features that you showed there are not in 2018, because at 122 you said, okay, this is now TFS, but in the meantime, VSTS continues to iterate. Right. You will okay. see those in a, in a later update. Okay, cool. Great. So let's, let's dive in and take Absolutely. a look at some of, the, some of the features here. I'll start off in the, in the work area. And this is where uh, we're going really after consistency and, uh, and just ease of use with finding the items that you want to search for uh, first. So this is where we've got this filter, filter control here. You can toggle that open. And you get the, the keyword search, but also some, uh, some helpful filter criteria. So mm -hmm. I can filter things that are just, just user stories or features here uh, and some of these other ones. And you'll see this across backlogs, boards, queries. Oh, cool. See that same control. Likewise, over in, in the plans, uh, delivery plans, which is available as an extension from the marketplace, we've added this inline uh, new item. Uh, so I can, I can just come in here and, because ideas could happen at any point, sure. right? I'm planning for the future, I'm looking out a few sprints. Oh, you know what? I need another, I need another feature here. Uh, and there Excellent. you go, saved directly Excellent. in line there. Yep. So those are some of, the, some of the helpful things in the work area. And then if I, if I shift over to uh, code, this really starts over in the, the code explore and, and editing space. And uh, just some small but, but nice little features. And, and I start by... Uh, Do we find a lot of people editing code here? You know, not, not, a, mo not a lot, but, okay. but for, those, for those small, helpful, or, or if I'm just looking through old, uh, previous code mm -hmm. or old commits, okay. the, the UI is really helpful because it's just you bring it up, you can, you can have your context of the, the branch and the... the Links to other other places right there, right. but uh, but to help with that, we've in introduced a way to uh, toggle toggle things like the mini map. I can bring that up Ooh. where I can see okay large files. I can scroll through this little mini map control. I've got also uh, toggle. We can get some white space in there so I can see some of the dots, or maybe if you're a tab guy or you're a, <laughs> or you're, a okay. you're a space gal or, or whatnot, and then. Um, Let's see, the other one was the, the word wrap, right? So, so you can toggle word wrap and, and you know, uh, don't have to scroll horizontally over there. So some small, small but nice enhancements mm -hmm. over, over in here. And uh, over on, if, I've got, if I'm looking at a commit, uh, this, the, in this case I found a commit here that's, uh, that's pretty big in size. So if I want to quickly just filter, okay, show me all the, all the DLLs that are uh, in this commit. Nice. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, see, filter, filter that list down. So th those are a couple of the nice areas in code. And sticking with this, I've, we've also added this ability to see if you're in a commit, what are the pull requests that this commit is, is in? And, and we show you both uh, your, uh, the first ones, but also uh, where we have a default branch. Uh, the default branch we're also highlighting. Mm -hmm. So then also as well, in uh, speaking of the pull requests, we've added the ability to See, uh, see, not only just the, uh, we've got the, the work items that we're linking there, but also be able to automatically close those work items. 
Oh, good. Yes. Uh, close those work items when I when I complete the pull request. So that's that's a nice little uh, save you a couple extra yes. clicks, or maybe yep. you forgot and didn't close right. the work item. You have item, to go right? find them <laughs> to close right. them. The time you, you save not having to go find them is awesome. Right. right. So so in this case, you know, I can approve this pull request. I can get this either autocomplete or complete, and mm -hmm. there's this checkbox here that says complete linked link cool. pull request after merging. Yep. So uh, that's great. Okay. Uh, the other thing over in code is is the the introduction of the the wiki and now built right into v to TFS. So we found that that having this uh, this wiki right right in our in our system here is nice to help help those in the organization and even the team understand how to contribute and mm -hmm. use your project. Um, I, I'd uh, I'd encourage those to go check out. We uh, also on on VS Toolbox we had a yep. an episode on that, so I encourage folks to check out that yep, as well. I'll link to that. Yep. Okay, so then I'm gonna. That's it for code. I'm gonna jump into. Um, uh, let's see. Bef actually, before I jump into release, I think there was something I wanted to mention about uh, GVFS, the Git, Git Virtual File System, and uh, how we're making that available uh, with and compatible with uh, TFS 20. And that's the ability to have these massive code bases uh, managed in Git, uh, right? Windows does yeah. that. I know that was blogged about by the Windows team several months ago, right. um, that they've got this, obviously, a ginormous code base, and it's all being managed in Git. Right. right. And I assume that TFS, VS, uh, TFS VSTS code base is also done in that. When you think about these, these really you know, gigabytes worth of, of re, uh, size and repos, mm -hmm. uh, that's where this is really coming in. Okay. So now customers uh, with code bases that big can also take advantage of this. That's right, and 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 leverage it. Uh, use TFS twenty eighteen with it. Cool. Okay. Uh, so now jumping into uh, release, uh, you notice right off the bat here we've got we've got our uh, rich visual uh, release uh, release definition editor here, mm -hmm. and in this case I've got I've got uh, an artifact here pointing to my. Uh, and this is the new one. This is the right, new which one. Has been in VSTS for a while, but this is. The new and improved one. This is the new and improved one. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, like you're saying, it's been it's been in the in the service. We've been iterating on it. It's been in preview. Mm -hmm. uh, lots lots of customer feedback involved, and now we've uh, we've got it to a point where we want to want to get it in the in the on-prem product as well. Right. And in this and case, if it's new yeah. to people and you're used to the old one, uh, you can just go to the docs and look at the the walkthrough that will just show you how to use it. It's, it's obviously, it's the same stuff in there. It's just things are in a different place. You click on different things to get to places. Right. So right. the docs will help you figure that out pretty quickly. And then once you know, then you just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in this case, I've got an artifact here pointing to my CI uh, continuous integration build. And it's, it's deploying in, in sequence to uh, ring zero mm -hmm. and then a ring one if that's successful. So this is, this is how uh, this is how we do it in VSTS, uh, where we deploy to rings in sequence like this. And the new the new uh, visual editor here gives us that that ability to see see how those environments right. uh, relate to each other. Okay. Uh, next, I wanted to take a look at uh, the um, in the package management space, which is also available as, as an extension. Uh, that that team's also introduced. Uh, or really consolidated some of the tasks and made, made mm -hmm. those more consistent. So we've got a consolidated NuGet task now. Uh, if I look at look at this NuGet yeah, this task, is definitely easier to use than, than the old one. Which right, wasn't necessarily right. difficult, but it feels quicker. Right, and more streamlined. Yeah, yeah. We've deprecated those those older ones that are that were separate for the different uh, commands, mm -hmm. and now we've got this this single one where it's just you select the command and, and off you go. And then uh, right before that, we've got the tool installer that helps you establish which version of NuGet am I going to use in yep. this build. Okay. Other, otherwise, uh, over in the test area, I want to talk about the uh, the new improvements we've made to traceability and linking uh, and defaulting of various attributes when we're doing exploratory testing. Mm -hmm. So we've got a feature here we might be uh, testing. We've got a test case that we might create along the way and, and a, a bug that we might uh, relate in here. You'll notice that, that there's, there's an area path, there's an iteration of the particular thing I'm testing. Now when I go and do my exploratory testing, like I'll, I'll uh, navigate over here to my test case. When I created this, it's, it just takes the area path of, of the requirement, takes the iteration. So these things are, are linked in a better mm -hmm. way or they're 
This one had a link, it, it tests the feature. It's got, they got the correct link type. And then it's also defaulting to the area so that I, again, I don't have to do those extra clicks to uh, keep everything consistent. Cool. Okay. And then finally in the, in the test area improvements here is around uh, this concept of test batching, which takes into account, okay, how many tests do I have? How many agents do I have? And then how do we, how do we kind of allocate them across our agents, right? So in this case, you know, you can automatically do it by saying, okay, just you know, average it across my agent pool and mm -hmm. you know, test, test like that. Or in this case here, I, I, I simulated if I, if I uh, you know, let, let, the, let the test batch automatically versus if I say, uh, let's say one test case per batch. Then you'll see that this really impacts the execution time of our, of our testing. Yeah. So you can control that with much finer grain with this, with this release. All right, so that's it. I've kind of gone through, gone through some of the key features through, through TFS 2018. Uh, I will say that I've only touched and, and shown a handful here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more to go check out, uh, and those are listed in the release notes. Okay. And we're also uh, looking for all the feedback we can get. So you'll find some, some links to some, some feedback channels where you can uh, give us some suggestions or uh, report any problems they encounter. Cool. I think one thing we wanted to mention was the XAML builds. Oh, that's right. That's right. So uh, an important uh, piece here for those looking to upgrade to 2018 is is that we've removed support for, for XAML builds. So if, if you are uh, using those and you want to continue using those builds, mm -hmm. uh, you'll need to uh, port over to the new, uh, the new build system, uh, set up some new build definitions and, and get those set up. We've got some documentation to help with that, but that's really something that we, we, we really ask that customers take a look at that before they, uh, before they do their upgrade. Okay, so test it out. Make sure you can duplicate your builds. Right. Um, and then you're, you're good to go. Right, and you can do that all in 2017, right? We've been running uh, yep. these two build systems in you parallel. You can also do it in VSTS. You could also do it right? in VSTS. Right? <laughs> you could fire up a VSTS instance, That's point right. it to the same code, right? So right. you could actually test it until you're completely satisfied that you have the build exactly the way you want it. Right. Then you could, so you could use that. Yeah. Um, it would be an easy way of, of not having to install TFS 2018 preview just to test it. Right. right, you can treat VSTS as your, as your preview. Right, yeah, yeah. VSTS and works then, great then with that. Yep. That gives you a chance to get used to VSTS, maybe you find you like it better, right? Right, right, <laughs> you're right. We do, we do uh, in preview right now, we do, we are offering uh, uh, the, uh, the migration tool to get you, get you up into VSTS mm -hmm. from TFS. Yep. Uh, so that's something to certainly check out here. You know, sure. um, we talked about VSTS at the beginning and how VSTS gets it's a lot of these features, and you know, this is, TFS is kind of a roll-up. But if, if you're looking to get get the latest and greatest from uh, from in terms of features, uh, VSTS is where you want to be. Right. Cool. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.